Hey guys, if you're watching this video, that means you've probably thought about becoming a YouTube video creator or becoming a streamer on Twitch, or both. Um, this video is to help you decide which of those two is a better option for you, and at the, at the end I'll have a, little, so a couple tips for you. Before I get started, I'm going to assume that everyone who's watching this video uh, either for YouTube videos or for Twitch streaming or something equivalent to Twitch streaming is uh, actually caring about growing an audience. So I'm actually going to start with YouTube. I'm going to start with the pros of doing YouTube videos. One of the biggest pros of doing YouTube videos is the fact that you have a, um, a very open time frame to do the, uh, the video recording and video editing for uploads. As long as you're pretty consistent with uh, when you, when uh, the time of day that you upload and the frequency, then you should be on the right track. The second big pro of doing YouTube is that your videos are pretty much going to be around forever. And thirdly, compared to streaming, you get to show specifically what you want to show. Now this is very important and I'm going to go more in depth with this about why this is important in the cons section of streaming. One of the cons of doing YouTube, unfortunately, is you're going to have to learn how to edit footage. And this can actually be a little more time consuming. If you're doing YouTube videos you're gonna, and you want to monetize your videos, you're going to have to learn a lot about um, the things that you can monetize, for starters, and this actually was a thing I had to learn a lot about, and the type of music that you can play in your videos, which is typically royalty-free music that you have to purchase and does will cost you money in most cases. And one of the biggest, uh, biggest negatives that I can tell you, honestly, is you're going to probably be spending a lot more time... Um, putting it like into recording and editing than you would for for streaming live on Twitch. If you're streaming live, then you know, you're just you're showing what you're doing to an audience while it's going, while it's happening. And if you're recording for YouTube, then you have to stop and edit and it's been my experience that editing actually does take a long time and I don't even spend nearly as much time as the professionals on YouTube do editing. I mean, they they say they spend two hours almost per video, and I I probably spend about, honestly, one hour editing. I'll probably spend an hour editing this video alone, and this video is not going to be very long. Okay, so now we've covered some of the basic pros and cons of YouTube, and we're going to go over to the Twitch side. So here are the pros of live streaming, and I'm using Twitch as an example just because I did Twitch. I know there's a lot of other streaming services out there, specifically for video gaming, but I'm just going to... If I say Twitch, I just mean live streaming. Okay, so one of the big pros, and this is just honestly personal personal preference or opinion here, I honestly believe that it is much easier to grow an audience on Twitch. Um, the reason why I believe that, um, I'll go over that after I finish all the other pros. Um, the second pro of streaming live is you have more viewer interaction, and I believe that will create a more enjoyable atmosphere for the viewers, and honestly for yourself. I think it's a lot more fun. The third pro, and this is pretty huge, is you don't have to really worry as much about the music stuff. Um, you can kind of listen to whatever you want to listen to, and if you go back and watch some of your vid like uh, streams, like a Twitch will automatically put out the videos that you've streamed as a watch past broadcasts. They will mute stuff that's um, copyrighted, but you still can play it while you stream. I don't think you're supposed to though, but I don't know of instances of enforcement on that. The biggest, the biggest pro of streaming live is the fact that you do not have to learn anything about video editing, and I gotta tell you, that is very, very handy. Um, I did t Twitch way before I did YouTube, and I had much hey, more... Listen. Shut up, phone! Should have put that on mute. Sorry! Um, so, basically, the big thing is, um, I did this before I did YouTube, and I gotta tell you, I had a much easier time growing an audience that kept returning than I did for ever had for YouTube. So kind of to elaborate a little bit about the pros of the streaming, the portion about, this is what I'm talking about, the building an audience, you know, you, the fact that you interact with the people is very important. If you interact with them, it creates this whole dynamic between the viewer and the streamer, and that makes people want to come back more. And the more people that you have that want to come back more is, that's how you grow an audience. That's your audience that you're growing right there. And it's a lot harder to achieve that on YouTube in my opinion, than it is on Twitch. One of the pros of not having to learn how to edit videos is actually a con as well. And it's a con in a bit of a different way. Now, the reason why it's a bad thing that you can't edit a stream is because you're always on. You're always streaming. Now, if I... Believe it or not, I actually have had some at the beginning of this video. I had some takes that I'm going to edit out because I was a little bit like, oh, God, I got to get ready. I got to get 
wasn't quite all here for the beginning portion. And you can't do that with a stream. You just, you've now messed up. And for some people, that's not a big deal. And honestly, if you play it off like a joke, it's not a big deal. People aren't going to care. But that's just an example. One reason why you would want to remove something, and for instance, is if you were streaming live and you've got a viewer that comes in and is acting in a way that is not appropriate for your channel. This has happened to everyone that has ever streamed, and it will happen to you if you get into it and you grow an audience. I promise you. And you have to learn how to deal with that. That's very important. And you can't just be like, this didn't exist. Deleted. Let's not deal with this. With YouTube, if you had, if you were doing a collab and the other person just all for some reason, it's just not, you guys really aren't on the same level, you know? Like, uh, for instance, if you wanted to be more um, family friendly and the person is swearing like a sailor, you can just be like, look, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think it came out well. Um, if you want to put it on your channel, I'm not going to stop you, but uh, then you can just decide, you know, I don't want to put it on my channel or whatever. If you're streaming live and you, you go out there and you with that person, your viewers are watching that. They're dealing, they're, you can't, you can't undo that. There's no undo button for streaming. Uh, I, g I gave a few examples and some of them, they might, might not matter to you and that's fine. Um, but I promise you there will be situations that will arise with streaming where you wish you could go back and undo something, but you will not be able to, it will not be possible. One of the things that's a kind of streaming live is your videos will eventually disappear. If with YouTube, they're pretty much going to be around for as long as YouTube decides to be around, and they've been around for a while, and I have a good imagine that they will be a while, around for a good while longer. So your videos are may live longer than you. You never know. Now, this is very key for streamers, okay? If you want to become a streamer and you want to grow an audience and all this other stuff, that's great. But here is something that's very important. You have to pick a schedule. You have to let you know, let your audience know what your schedule is because they're gonna people who are interested in you. They're gonna ask, especially when you're starting out. They're gonna say, "What days do you stream? When do you stream?" And if you go, "I don't. I just stream whenever," you're gonna have a really hard time growing an audience because then they don't know when to come back and watch you. So you have to have specific days set aside with specific times where you stream. Um, YouTube is a lot easier to deal with this because you can record whenever you want and then upload it and you can set it, hey, uh, turn on at this time and you're good, you're done. Um, it's a bit more work, but you can do it when you want to. Streaming, you can't. You do not have that luxury with streaming. You have to be on specifically when you say you're going to be on and that's that. If you don't do that, you're going to have a, you're not going to grow an audience and that's just, that's one of the biggest things uh, with streaming that you just, you're going to have to know. So I guess overall here, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is if you are deciding between YouTube or Twitch, or if you want to try and do both, the big takeaway is that it really depends on your ability to, um, commit to consistency. If you can't make the same days repeatedly, like you can't stream live, like Monday through, let's just say Monday through Wednesday, those are the days you stream. If you can't say, I'm always going to stream Monday through Wednesday for a three or four hours, you shouldn't stream um, if you want to grow an audience. I think, well, I shouldn't say you shouldn't stream. It'll be hard though. It will be more of a challenge to grow an audience if you can't consistently pick days to stream. But if you want to do, if you're thinking about YouTube or Twitch, you can say, well, I can still upload the same days. That's a, you're, if you can work around your schedule, that's not a problem for YouTube as it is for Twitch because you, as I said before, you can record and edit whenever you want and you can upload those videos and set them specifically to um, release at a certain time. So if you wanted to release videos Monday through Wednesday, you could record, edit some videos and set them to release at specific times on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but you can't do that with Twitch. So that's one thing right there to consider. One of the other things, um, and this isn't really so much um, a thing of helping you decide between the two of them, it, but this is just kind of something that I just thought of. If you aren't, like, you know, really used to public speaking, get used to being awkward. Um, starting up is going to be weird. You're going to feel weird about it. I know, just thinking about when I first started, doing my intro that is so natural for me to do now. Um, I remember the first video I did, I believe it took me, like, ten times to get that. Like, just get that down. Um, and a few for videos after that, it still took me a few tries because it's just so weird to do that in front of a microphone. So this is something just to keep in the back of your mind. You're going to have to get 
accustomed to talking in front of what you think is a lot of people because it's going to happen. So these are some tips that are just in generalized tips. Um, if you are interested in getting into either category, I would really recommend that you shoot for at least 720p quality video and invest in a decent microphone. I started with a Blue Yeti. I actually have it right here. I didn't even think, realize that. I'm just like, I'll go right in front of me. I don't use it anymore um, for recording my voice. I do use it for um, talking in my computer. This is right here, my Blue Yeti, Yeti microphone. I use a Rode uh, N2 microphone now, which is what's attached to my camera. So if you really get into it, eventually you're gonna start upgrading your equipment, which is, I didn't start with all this equipment, you know, I upgraded over time, but I did start with this uh, Blue Yeti microphone. I also started with a Logitech webcam. It's uh, 10 shoots 1080p, but I didn't shoot in 1080p. I just, just got it in case I ever got to the point where I could because my, my video card wasn't good enough to shoot 1080p at the time. So I, I over, over the course, I've upgraded all my equipment and all my computer components. Um, the other thing is, I, I kind of covered this before, but just in general, this is still just a very important advice. If you're streaming, you need to engage with your audience. You need to talk, you know, if they're in chat and they're stop talking, respond to them. Say hi, ask them how they're doing, um, engage. If they ask a question, respond to it, stuff like that. It's very, very simple, very, very easy, and it will connect your viewers to you, and that's just really important to you it gets people to come back and and you have more fun <laughs> honestly another big thing um is if you aren't sure what to stream and kind of don't really have a niche or an area yet it's pretty a pretty good advice to look for new games that are coming out not necessarily triple a titles um i would aim for games that are a little like indie less known um one thing that i did when i was streaming is and this actually when i had my best successes streaming um too I would go in the list of games, like where you can see the list of Twitch games that are streamed, and I would go around and I'd look at games that had like a medium amount of viewers. Not a, not a really high amount, not a really a low amount, a medium amount. And I'd go through and I'd look through them all and I'd see the ones that have only a couple people streaming them. So if there's like 250 people watching a specific game and there's only five people streaming, it was my experience that these people were wanting to see that game and not necessarily the streamer themselves. So they would bounce around checking all the different streamers to see which one they wanted to watch. And I, that's doing that is when I got the most viewers at one time, which which was 250, uh, which is the best I've ever, ever done um, streaming. And, and here's here's my last piece of, piece of advice, and I wish anyone who has gotten this far, thank you for watching, by the way, but take this with a grain of salt, okay? If you're getting into Twitch or YouTube or both, and you're looking to grow an audience, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not an easy task. I have struggled with this for a long time. It has caused me some stress, a fair amount of stress, um, and I'll tell you, that truthfully, it's a saturated market. There's a lot of people doing this now. It's not like this new thing that just emerged like it did, you know, how many years ago that it just, just became a thing. You know, there's a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of people starting out. And there's a lot of people who are established. So you got a lot of competition. So the biggest thing I can tell you is don't stop. If you want to do this for real, you really want to do this, that's great. I wish you the best luck, not saying you can't, uh, you can definitely do it, but you can't if you give up because then you're not trying anymore. Uh, it's going to take time and it's going to take energy. And if you're doing this and you're not look, really looking to grow an audience, you're just doing it for funsies and all that other jazz, I say that great. That's probably the best place you want to be. Well, that's kind of the basics that I wanted to cover. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I really hope you tune in to enjoy more. And, as always, I really, really wish you all have a great day. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.